hopefully you enjoyed that nice little use video and the rolling in of those different pictures and uh, I'm gonna try this new style of course with reviews reviews are one of the most <laughs> overdone things on YouTube at least in the outdoor gear world so I'm always finding ways to try and spice it up make it more original and just make it more entertaining for you guys uh, so anyways now getting on to the talking part of the review of this uh, camp LT right camp muck now this is a pretty hidden away knife not too many people know or use this knife and I think that is for a bit of shame because I really do like this knife for the most part there are a few parts that I do dislike about this knife uh, and overall I'm gonna be getting into the discussion that is more to come when I discuss the pricing of this knife like you know uh, this knife is pretty expensive for what you're getting and so I'm gonna be talking about that in a little saw bit with uh, the whole use video or hopefully you guys saw that part of the use video this knife is pretty capable and above being quite capable at carving the really small size of this knife because it's around seven and a half inches maybe seven and three quarter inches overall length uh, it is pretty small and that makes it a really agile knife for doing a lot of fine tasks another thing that makes it really capable at fine tasks is it's very Thin size. This knife, it starts out at an eighth of an inch, but because it is a full flat grind, you know, uh, from this point, essentially from this point onward in both directions, it gets smaller and smaller. So you're left with a very small, very fine edge, especially up toward the tip. Another thing that's very distinct about this knife is, and as the name kind of implies, Camp Muck, this is a Nesmic design. And that was one of the main reasons why I was drawn to getting this knife is because Nesmic designs are not only pretty hard to find, but you, you just don't see them a lot on knives. And I think this knife is very well executed, the, the uh, Nesmic design, and it really shows in a lot of the capabilities. Now, something I can't show on video, but I have some experience dressing a handful of animals with this and I will say it is a very capable dr field dresser and something that I've always loved about dressing game animals with the uh, Nesmic design is that because there's this large hump right here it allows you to really get your finger there and it works more like this and allows you to pivot the belly of the blade and the belly of course is far more e uh, exaggerated on a Nesmic design so it really allows you to do skinning very very well and something as well I think is very well executed on this knife that is sometimes mis-executed on um, Nesmic designs is the tip on the tip <clears throat> too many times and you'll see this thing on things like like the, the uh, what is it condor Nesmic where essentially what the condor people will do is they'll just fully round this tip but technically Nesmics tend to have more of a tip now it's more like a sheep's foot but sheep's footed uh, knives or tip knives still have a tip and I found so long as you know how to use a Nesmic design you can actually start the insertion cut for gutting and actually very successfully skin and gut animals with this knife and once again I've got uh, squirrels I've won a pheasant and so I've scud or I've got a handful of different types of animals once again birds are a little bit different than mammals such as squirrels and the fact that they have wings and the wing entire connection is really interesting so you have to have a very good and thin knife to get in there and separate the wing from the body of the animal and I find this knife does it very good I was very impressed to see how this knife handled a you know pretty good sized pheasant uh, very well so overall it is a very capable skinning knife and I think for POU uh, to the whole philosophy of use discussion of this knife and uh, you know how this knife performs as they want it to perform or in the philosophy the makers intended it to I think it does all right at the camp crafts but I think it really really excels at least through my testing at skinning game animals and I think the muck the Nesmic design was really really good and really designed for the skinning dressing and processing of game animals but at the same time it being 
being a capable and still usable camp craft knife. Now another thing I didn't show here is that of course like all LT Wright knives this knife does have a ground back and at first just like the feeling of it I was at first a little leery about how well it would strike a ferro rod but it actually does a very good job at striking a ferro rod. Uh, it is quite sharp and definitely sharp enough to get good sparks. Another good part about the ferro rod striking is this is the A2 tool steel version. I'm not sure if they made one in 01. I know the very original one made by Blind Horse Knives was in 01, but this one's an A2. But that A2, I really like it for striking ferro rods because A2 is, and especially tempered properly, is a very hard steel, so it really throws a good amount of sparks off, and you'll have no problem starting a fire with the spine, using the spine of this with a ferro rod. So that's another good thing you about this knife. It's pretty but, well executed for the most part. I don't find anything really wrong with it. At times, as far as like wanting more out of this knife, I would say it is a little small in my opinion. I wish there was just a little bit more blade length and handle length because especially with gloves, you'll notice here if you guys can see that, I have very, very little handle. I mean, technically with gloves on, my hands do still fit on the handle, but my pinky is really on the edge of falling off. So it is like just there, just enough uh, it, with gloved hands. I will say, like I said, that's probably my biggest thing with this uh, blade style. I would say the Nesmic design was meant to be a little bit larger, in my personal opinion. So you'll find some capabilities, especially things like batoning. While this knife can definitely baton, uh, it just can't really span that large a, a piece and so or a large piece of wood so it is limited in that fact and once again limited in other camp chores just by its size so that would probably be my biggest critique about uh, its POU use is this knife is designed to be an all-around camp knife and my whole thing is it's just a little bit too small in my opinion to be an all-around camp knife for me a good all-around camp knife size is around nine inches in total length with you know around f at least four inches in blade I don't like about this knife. Uh, the two primary things I don't like about this knife are one, I feel it's a little unfinished, especially without gloves on. One of my biggest gripes is this piece of steel, like you guys can see here how it you know goes beyond the handle, this is still sharp right here. I mean, these are still 90 degrees and right at this point here, hopefully you guys can see this transition point, it is still sharp. Both of these edges are quite sharp. And and when you're ha handling this knife barehanded, you notice that. In addition, the G10 here is also sharp. So a lot of handle issues in that it's not, especially ungloved, it's not the most comfortable knife to hold. In addition to that, uh, and this is just speaking because mine's like sculpted G10 here, uh, on the lanyard, uh, the brass, there are a few high spots and I had to hit them with a uh, file and sandpaper because they were so rough that they would actually legitimately grab your skin. So I just had to take care of those things immediately because they were just too rough. And so my biggest complaint is there's just a little bit of unfinishedness about this knife and I feel especially for the price point and I'm going to roll in some competitive options that is, does not really leave me that happy. Now on to competitive options and I think this is where I dislike this knife the most. Once again, not to say this knife is bad, but I paid at Knives Ship Free $148 for this knife, the Camp Muck here. So that in, that's the cheapest place I could find it and the, the only place I could find it available. But I did some other researching on other knife uh, websites and on those other knife websites, different styles were going for around $150 to $162. And that, like I said, is my biggest problem with this knife. This knife is still, you know, seven and three quarters ish inches and it's, you know, that big, and it's $150. I'll just ballpark it. And so another knife that's $150 is this Allegheny M38. And so you can see with this Allegheny, I'm gonna take off my gloves here so you guys can see a little bit better. But with this Allegheny, it has nine inches overall length. 
and so you can see definitely larger no joking about that you know it's definitely larger and to me in my opinion this is a far more finished knife all the handle scales are very well rounded there's no sharp pieces of steel for my hand to get caught on uh, you know this knife is very capable and like I said it's nearly two inches bigger and to add more fun to this this is a two tool steel just like this so I mean you're legitimately paying essentially two dollars more for like two inches more of a, a more capable knife and in my opinion for an all-around camp knife I like this knife a little bit more so that and not to mention you're getting a kydex sheath which depends on how you feel about that you're also getting this handmade by the company and that's f from company prices by the way that's what the, if you were to go to Allegheny and buy this knife from Allegheny themselves it'd be 150 bucks so you, this could even potentially be cheaper and you also get you know your choice of blade finish you get your choice of handle colors and liner colors so I mean $150 for all of that I mean you know that that really is a very value option especially in comparison to this my only other one that I want to bring out here is uh, the tops field craft to bring up more to and that's what Tops field craft and this one runs cheaper than both of these two options at around $120 to $100 depending on where you get it there's so many of these knives you can even get them on a secondary for you know like 80 bucks but you know getting it new from like blade HQ or knife ship free okay I don't think they have it but getting it from blade HQ for sure it's around like $120 and you can see this knife is nearly 10 inches so way bigger you know no questioning that size it's way bigger very comfortable once again going back to the point that you know the handles are finished completely smooth just like the Allegheny you know there's no sharp points on this thing it, you know the brass this one uses brass uh, for the inside of its lanyard it's not you know it doesn't have any weird stick out you know things that catch on your skin you know overall this is a very refined knife and now I do understand Topps makes these an assembly line style so you know this knife is really handmade whereas the Topps is more of an assembly line knife but still you know I mean 148 to 160 dollars you're paying for this knife and it's significantly smaller than both of the knives I just showed and you know it's it lacks a lot of finish to it and so that's probably the biggest thing I dislike about this knife and kind of why I'm on the fence about whether I should recommend this knife or not I would ultimately say if you are thinking about buying this knife if you want a knife for the Nesmic design if you really like Nesmic designed knives and you want a, a well done Nesmic styled knife that you're probably going to run as a neck knife I would say that this knife you should probably consider though do keep in mind you'll have to do some finishing work to it once again like I had to polish down these lanyard this lanyard hole area and I'll have to polish down these G10 scales and where this metal surface mates you know so I still have to do a little bit of work to it and once again I really begin to dislike that now if you are just looking for a good outdoor knife a good fieldable camp knife that you want to take on camp outings and you know be able to do your small chores like you know cut up firewood you know process do some feather sticks you know some of the more basic things I would recommend taking a look at something like this Allegheny or the Tops Fieldcraft because honestly I feel both of these knives offer you a lot higher value than this knife that's all I have to say about the LT Wright Camp Muck. I apologize if anyone thought this knife was just going to be stellar over the moon. I actually really loved this knife and wanted it to be a 10 out of 10. But once again, when I started putting it up against things like this Allegheny or the Topps Fieldcraft, it just didn't stack up. I mean, as far as value goes, this is not a value option. You know what I mean? A value option so anyways guys don't forget to comment like share subscribe and that's it for now I'm out